What's going on guys, this is Rob. Uh, if you guys enjoy my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell so you never miss out on my sexy voice. Okay, so we are jumping back into uh, Batman the White Knight. We're on issue number seven, we're almost done. We have like this one and then one like the conclusion. And and God, dude, this story is so good. This story is, is it's crazy how good this whole thing is. All right, so basically what we have here, like, like we pick up with this whole thing with like the Joker quote unquote returning. And that's kind of the cool thing here is in all honesty, I love the idea of Jack Napier. I love the idea of like the Joker going sane, but at the end of the day, it is the Joker. I like the Joker as the crazy guy. Everybody likes the Joker as the crazy guy. And that's really what Sean Murphy gives us to a degree and it's cool the way he puts this sort of twist on it the way he puts this kind of caveat on it is what we end up finding out is that with the Joker personality kicking back in what's happening is the meds are losing their effect basically his body's becoming immune to it and the result is that the Joker personality is constantly pushing itself out and it's cool because it gives us this kind of internal battle between like Jack Napier and the Joker himself which is something that I love to see with regards to like how this story is unfolding but from here we switch over to Batman and again this is kind of cool because Batman is of course locked up in Arkham Asylum and the one thing that I've been seeing in the comments. This is why I love the way Sean Murphy writes this. The one thing I've been seeing in the comments really more than anything else is no way Batman would be locked up in Arkham Asylum. He knows a million ways to get out. This is one of the things that I want you guys to notice about Batman and hopefully it's one of the things that you guys have picked up on as we've gone through this story. Batman as he's depicted here in this particular story is kind of primitive. I mean it's not like he's he's like stupid or anything like that but like when you compare the way like this Batman dresses or like the quality of the Batcave or the vehicle he drives to like the DC Rebirth Batman they almost seem like night and day. This guy's wearing what amounts to like weightlifting gloves and he's got like a Batman uniform on, but it doesn't quite have the same kind of pizzazz, right? Like the same kind of shiny, polished, you know, I'm Batman and I've, I'm so technologically advanced and I'm like a man from the future. You don't see those kind of things in this. This is a far more grounded, far more tangible and far more real Batman. And it works. It works so well because this is the kind of Batman you would expect to see. What makes Batman unique and the reason why he kind of stands the test of time, regardless of like what is uniform form is, is the intelligence and the martial arts skill of Batman. His ability to like deduce things that people wouldn't normally be able to pick up combined with his ability to just beat the crap out of people. That's what makes Batman timeless. You know, sort of Sean Murphy putting his own twist on how Batman looks while simultaneously giving us the character that we all know and love. And so from here, it picks up with Jack Napier going to meet Neo Joker because remember, she's basically kind of like taken over the city of Gotham, right? I mean, using like this massive freeze cannon that was developed by the father of Victor Freeze, what she's done is basically just like frozen over the city of Gotham. But with regards to Neo Joker, she's like the new Harley Quinn. That was the whole basis of the story. The original Harley Quinn left without Jack Napier Joker ever realizing it. The new Harley Quinn took his place. And then when the old one came back, the new Harley took off and became Neo Joker. She became the new version of the Joker. But her idea has always been, I want Joker back. It's cool because in a lot of ways, Neo Joker kind of represents the fan base. Us as the reader, we sit down, we, we start reading Batman the White Knight because we see the solicitations all over the place in DC Rebirth. And we're like, wow, that looks cool. And then we start cracking it open. We start just tearing through the pages and we're like, oh my God, this is one of the greatest Batman stories ever written. But then like we start to see Joker go sane. And at the end of the day, it's like, that's cool. But like, I want to see the Joker. Like, I want the Joker back. And so Neo Joker is kind of the stand in for us that like, we want to see the Joker return in some form or fashion. Jack Napier's idea is fine. If you want the Joker back, then we'll bring the Joker back. And he lets that part of his personality kind of break loose for a moment when he suddenly says like, the Joker will return on my turns. And so th that's kind of a cool thing. Notice this, Jack Napier begins to kind of use the Joker as a weapon. It's his own gun, his, his switchblade, his pocket knife. It's a weapon for him to use to achieve a certain goal. Now, the other thing to bear in mind here is he doesn't have total control. In this instance, he sort of just, you know, opens the door and lets the Joker come out and then shuts the door again. It's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's like Bruce Banner and the Incredible Hulk. Just because the Joker's there and Jack Napier let him out doesn't mean that Jack Napier has control over the Joker. And that's why this is awesome is because we kind of get the best of both worlds for the short, sp uh, short span of time. The other thing to bear in mind here is the original Harley Quinn. Harley's torn up about this. Like Jack Napier going sane, Jack Napier becoming a regular guy was the greatest thing that could happen to him because in the mind of Harley Quinn, he can finally do what Batman's never been able to do. Every day, Batman is one step forward, one step back. He's a dog chasing his tail. He's going nowhere. But with Jack Napier, it was legitimately changing Gotham City, affecting change in a way that could tangibly be seen and tangibly be felt. That's what made him so successful is he won the hearts and minds of people. But that's the interesting thing here is because when you look at this situation, you say, yeah, sure, he cleaned up Gotham because none of the villains are there, but none of the villains are there because they're all under the control of Neo Joker. And that's the question that Sean Murphy asked, did he really save Gotham City or does it just look that way because the circumstances are unfolding themselves in a way that keeps the villains at bay while everything seems to be going back to normal? 
Not only that, Batman had basically figured out that because Harley Quinn was the one who was working so hard to try to keep Jack, Nap uh, Jack Napier sane, at the end of the day, Batman has figured out that like Harley Quinn will push Jack Napier in the direction of seeking out the help of Batman because there's no other option that he has. It's the only choice he has here. The Joker needs Batman. And in a lot of ways, Neo Joker was right when she said the Joker's going to come back and make his return because his ego won't let Neo Joker conquer Gotham. But Gotham is, is, is a half measure. It's incomplete if Batman's not there. And so with Jack Napier showing up and simply saying, like, if I let the Joker out, if I let him run amok, sure, he'll take out Neo Joker and he'll conquer Gotham as well because you're not out there. You're not out there stopping him. You're not out there chasing him. And so Jack Napier grabs Batman, brings him along and says, you've got to save me here. But this is kind of a cool moment because the two of them sort of get into this argument. Like Jack Napier and Batman sort of argue with one another over who it is that's actually doing any good. Jack Napier's argument is I've made Gotham a better place in ways that you've never been able to do and your entire career is Batman. And while I can't necessarily stop all those villains, what I've done is I've managed to get the people to care about the city that they live in. They don't live in fear anymore. They live in, in confidence that they can walk down the street and keep their city safe from everybody else. They're not relying on you. And you've never been able to affect that change. You've never been able to inspire people. But Batman's argument is, yeah, but you broke the law to do it. And then Jack Napier comes back with this perfect argument and says, yeah, but so did you. You were a vigilante. You operated outside of the law. You weren't held accountable to anybody. I got the support of the public. I work with the police. I don't work alongside them as someone who's just there. It's an awesome argument because that's 100% true. I think in years to come, people will look at this and see it as like a critique of Batman. That's what it is. It's a critique of the Batman character. He operates outside of the law. He does what he wants, when he wants, how he wants. And it just happens to be that he works in the, in the interests of Gotham City. Batman says like, my allegiance is to Gotham, but at no point has he sought the help of the people. At no point has he, has he inspired the people to do something better. He's always simply just taken the weight of the city on his shoulders and said, it's my job now to protect everyone. Whereas Jack Napier, took the people to the fight, said, look, I am here like you. I'm I'm not someone above the city itself. I am a citizen. I do all the things that I'm supposed to. I want to be a part of this role, of, of this army of Gotham. I don't want to lead this army of Gotham. And that's why it's so awesome. And that's why it works so well. Now, ultimately, because of the fact that like the overarching goal is to take out Neo Joker, the two of them end up pairing up. But Jack Napier's argument is, look, when Batman says, I want a full confession from you for everything that you've done since you've been Jack Napier, all the criminal activity that you've been involved in, because he has been involved and some pretty seedy stuff. He has broken the law. He says, I want a full confession. Jack Napier says, fine, I'll give you your confession, but Harley Quinn has to go free. You cannot have Harley Quinn intertwined in this. She does not get arrested for anything. And this is cool because this is like the one unifying factor that Joker and Jack Napier share, Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn, while, while we may say that like Batman is the center of Joker's world, to a degree that's true. But the fact that like Harley, the original Harley Quinn took off and like Joker sought out a new one means Joker always needs a Harley Quinn. She's an intrinsic part of his life. With Jack Napier, it's the same way. He always has her by his side. She's his closest confidant. And so of course, with the two of them teaming up, uh, what we end up having is Batman asking the question saying, if we work together, there's one thing that I want to know. I want to know what happened to Jason Todd. Because remember, Sean Murphy kind of flipped the script on us with this one. What we ended up finding out here is Jason Todd was Robin before Dick Grayson. In main DC continuity, Dick Grayson was Robin long before Jason Todd. Jason Todd was the second Robin, Tim Drake was the third, and then Damian Wayne was the fourth. And so all we really knew was that the whole situation involving Jason Todd went down almost identical to like death in the family. And, and that was awesome because that story is so landmark in the Batman mythos. But it was basically the idea that like Joker had killed Jason Todd. What we end up having is this revelation coming from, from Jack Napier that like Jason Todd's not dead. We end up finding out that like the one thing that Joker wanted was to know the identity of Batman, not so he could take him out. By knowing the identity of Batman, Joker would know something that Batman didn't. And so Joker would have something on him. He'd have a measure of control over Batman. If all else fails, it'd be the one thing Joker knows that Batman doesn't, isn't aware that the Joker knows. And so when Jason Todd just kind of snapped, you know, when, when, when he basically offered his last words and said, I wish I never Never met Bruce Wayne, Joker cuts him loose because he's finally revealed the identity. But that's where Jack Napier kind of makes his revelation. Jason Todd's alive. He's not dead. He's free floating out there in the world somewhere. Who knows? Maybe he'll come back as Red Hood. We have no earthly clue, but he wants you to believe he's dead because he felt like you betrayed him, that you took him under, under your wing to become Robin. We don't really know that backstory. We can largely surmise that it happened the same way it did in the post-crisis landscape. You know, basically, Jason Todd was a guy who boosted, you know, almost uh, who stole the wheels off the Batmobile, basically. But like, we can assume that happened, but we don't know for 
sure. All we know is that Jason Todd became Robin somewhere along the line. And the result was that where the two of them largely fought as a dynamic duo, that when, when uh, Jason Todd was brought into the world of Batman, he was brought into a world of danger and death. And so when, J when Jason Todd was taken by the Joker, was having the absolute tar beat out of him and on the edge of dying, the one thing he resented above all others was being brought in by Bruce Wayne, was being adopted by Bruce Wayne. He wishes he'd never met the man. And so that seems to instill this massive hatred for Batman on behalf of Jason Todd. And it's cool because it works. Because what this does is it sets things up for like the introduction of the Red Hood. If Sean Murphy, you know, if this story really became as huge as, 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 it, as it seems to be, if it really is one of these things where like it turns into a story that Sean Murphy can build off of, then we can see Red Hood introduced. The foundation is already there. But again, with the two of them kind of siding and kind of working together, Batman has to put that little bit of past behind him. He has to kind of walk away from that whole situation and focus almost strictly on the here and now. And so going to visit Victor Freeze and asking the question of how it is that Victor Freeze is going to help with this whole situation, Victor says the same thing that he told Barbara Gordon. There's nothing I can do here. I don't know how this machine works. Construction on this massive weapon started after I'd already left my father when I took off and I, I came to the United States. I don't know the ins and outs of it. But what he does do is he offers us information on how to like access the island of where the machine's at without, you know, Neo Joker knowing. What he basically says is like when the machine was being constructed, because Batman asked, how could, how could this thing have been built with no one knowing about it? And Victor Freeze says they were using tunnels. You know, literally Thomas Wayne had tunnels constructed under Gotham City that basically all reached to this one specific location. They brought in all kinds of things to see this thing constructed underground so nobody would be aware of it. And that's what's awesome is because it's one of these things like Commissioner Gordon kind of says it himself. You never learn everything about Gotham City. There's always something new to learn. But again, this is Sean Murphy kind of turning the table, flipping the script on a lot of things and saying Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne weren't like the kindly people who were just in the wrong place at the wrong time and they were just shot in cold blood by Joe Chill. They have a dark history. And so ultimately they end up basically allying themselves, you know, kind of coming together. The Joker banding alongside Batman, who's working alongside the Bat family, who's working alongside the Gotham Police Department. This entire group, basically led by Batman and the Joker, they end up like making their way towards the island where Neo Joker is currently residing. And the idea is Batman simply says like, okay, this is your shot, Jack. Like this is your shot to get out there, get into the head of Neo Joker and basically serve as a distraction. We have no idea what'll happen to him, but like your job is to get in there, to be a distraction and get into her head while we get in there and basically take everything down to bring this entire empire crumbling down around her. After which we have no clue what happens. We have to wait for the next issue. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace.